Good evening and welcome to Mount Bellew Agricultural College. My name is Edna Curley and I'm the college principal. We have a really exciting programme developed for you this evening, showcasing all of what Mount Bellew has to offer. We look forward to receiving your questions and your engagement with us this evening. Good evening again and a very warm welcome to the Mount Bellew Agricultural College's virtual open evening. Mount Bellew Agricultural College is the longest established agricultural college in Ireland, providing agricultural education in the west of Ireland since 1904. We're the only agricultural college west of the Shannon providing training courses on behalf of our partners in Chagas. The wealth of agricultural expertise in the college and on our two farms supports the learning and training of our young farmers on one campus. And I'm very delighted to be joined this evening by a number of my colleagues here in Mount Bellew. We have Enda, Barry and Martin. And I'm going to ask the guys now to introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about, about what you do here and your own background. Thank you, Enda. I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Edna. And you're very welcome, everybody, to our virtual open evening here in Mount Bellew. Uh, my name is Enda Kennedy and I am the assistant principal here in Mount Bellew Agricultural College. I come from a farming background. We are suckler farmers at home on a typical West of Ireland fragmented farm. My background is in agricultural engineering and also agricultural, agricultural science. And um, as I said, I'm assistant principal here in the college and I currently teach farm safety and a number of our agricultural engineering modules. Thank you very much, Enda. Barry. Thank you, Enda. Um, my name is Barry Bonner. I'm um, a lecturer here in Sheep Husbandry at Mount Ag College. I've been here since uh, 2008. I uh, started off as an um, agriculture technician and uh, have become a teacher in recent years here in the college. My background was I started here during the level five um, and I progressed on to do a degree and a master's degree in agricultural science. Thank you, Thank you very much, Barry. Martin. Jeeve, uh, Agus Falche, is Misha Martin on Will Kieran, Agus is Leachter May and Shaw, a Colossia Talbiachta on Cragon. Uh, good evening and welcome to Mount Bellew Agricultural College. Uh, my name is Martin Mulkerns. I'm a beef lecturer here in the college, uh, similar to Barry and Enda. I come from a farming background in my column in West Galway, uh, beef, uh, a beef enterprise, uh, but we've also moved into some small scale contract rearing this year as well. Uh, my background is as an agricultural science graduate uh, from UCD, and I have a master's in agricultural innovation support from UCD as well um, under the Chagas Walsh Fellowship Program. Um, and I was fortunate then after that to spend some time at uh, Adra Agricultural College doing some voluntary work in Uganda. Um, and after that, I spent two years on the Chagas Arivo Joint Programme as a dairy discussion group facilitator. So unlike Enda and Barry, I'm the, the newest member here since January. Um, but we, we look forward to talking you through the college this evening. Thank you very much, Martin. And you're, you're very welcome. I'm delighted to be joined here with you this evening, guys. Enda, can we jump straight in, please, and just discuss the programmes that we deliver here in Mount Value? Yes, absolutely. Um, students will start off in the Chagas Level 5 programme, which is our search in agriculture. So essentially that is your, where you lay your foundation, that is the introductory, introductory courses into, or introductory modules into agriculture. From there, they will progress to our Chagas Level 6 um, courses, which we have three to offer. We have a Level 6 advanced course in dairy herd management, we offer a level six advanced course in dry stock management, and I am delighted to announce that we are offering a level six advanced course in agricultural mechanization. And that's for those uh, people out there who are, I suppose, would prefer looking in over field gate at a silage outfit and a combine rather than uh, maybe sheep and cattle. <laughs> Thank you very much, Enda. You're very good. Uh, just before we go to um, our piece of film from the Dairy Enterprise, we actually have a question in. And can I encourage you all, please, to send in your questions in Zoom via our Q&A uh, function. And uh, a question from Sarah. And thank you, Sarah, very much for your question. I have no farm at home. Can I still do a green search? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, as I said, we start at an introductory level, level five, um, and that will bring you right the way through, um, giving you a good insight into a broad range of agricultural uh, topics and from, um, from what we cover here in Mount Bellew, be it uh, our, our sheep enterprise, our dairy enterprise, and our beef enterprise. Super, thank you very much. And as you mentioned, our dairy enterprise 
We'll now go to a piece of video presentation from Francis. Francis is our dairy lecturer here in Montpellier. So I'll leave it over to Francis. Hello, my name is Francis Kern. Um, the dairy farm in Montpellier consists of 48 hectares divided between a 33 hectare milking platform and a 15 hectare silage block. The herd comprises of 90 cows. They're split between Holstein Frisian cows and a Jersey type um, cross. These cow types were chosen to represent the systems currently in place in Ireland, exposing the learner to the on-farm realities of each production system. The herd represents a spring calving system, supplying manufacturing milk to a Revo Co-op. The aim of the enterprise here is to equip the young farmers with the necessary skills to manage a profitable dairy production system. During your time in the college, you will be involved in milking and calving the cows, body condition scoring and heat identification, grass covers and feed management, as well as implementing drying off protocols on farm. On the farm itself, the main focus is to improve grass growth and utilization on the heavy soils we have here. This grass-based system of milk production is the most sustainable system throughout the world. And indeed, it is the most efficient in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. On top of that, Irish grass-based systems are superior in terms of animal health, welfare, biodiversity, and also water quality. Indeed, we at Mount Bellier Agricultural College are conscious of our role in the dairy industry and meeting the national challenge on the environment. Therefore, we are adopting a range of on-farm practices that can contribute to both profitability gains while also meeting our sustainability challenge. Currently, um, our sustainability program includes the use of high EBI bulls, protected urea, and low emission slurry application. And this is coupled with the establishment of clover-rich um, swords and also farm hedgerows. We aim to address the seven steps in improving farm sustainability right throughout all the college enterprises. Studying at Mount Bellio Agricultural College gives the learners the opportunity for hands-on training and experience in, in all the enterprises, therefore providing learners with the necessary practical skills to build on their classroom knowledge, which has always been the focus of education in the Agricultural College Network. Thank you, Francis, for that. Martin, could I just pick up on something Francis mentioned there? We have two cow types here uh, on the farm, the black and white traditional cow and the crossbred. Could you just talk us through, please, uh, the merits of that? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic video there uh, to give an overview of the dairy enterprise. Um, as, as you mentioned, there's two different uh, cow types there, the traditional black and white or Frisian genetics, um, as well as that, we are an agricultural college here and we are trying to expose the students to the different cow types um, that are out there. So we also have Jersey genetics and some crossbred uh, animals up on the farm as well. In terms of our, our breeding policy, we do follow the economic breeding index or it's often uh, shortened down to the EBI. Um, so our bulls this year would predominantly be black and white genetics. Um, the average EBI of the bull team was 300. But we like to look in there in a bit more detail as well and break down that uh, EBI into its finer components. So we'd really be looking at the fertility sub-index, the kilograms of milk solids. We'd be looking for over 30 kilograms of milk solids there in the bulls, the fat and protein percentages. And also we like to see a positive on the, the milk sub-index or the milk kgs as well. Thank you very much, Martin. So as I mentioned, the farms support the programs that we run here. So Enda, if I could just come back to you there, you mentioned level five and the level six programs. Could you talk us through the application process, please? Yeah, no problem. Um, the application process is, is very straightforward. If you just log on to our website, onfellioagri.com, there is a link there uh, to click and that will guide you through the application process for our level five and level six courses. Thank you very much. And I just have a couple of questions in. And again, thank you very much to everybody who are submitting their questions. We encourage you to send them in through the, the Q&A tab on Zoom. Um, what documents do I need, Enda, for the application? Very straightforward. You will require three documents. Uh, the first one is your PPS number, the second being your birth cert, and also a driver license, your driver's license, if, if you have one. Very good. Again, another question we just have received. Do I have to have completed my leaving certificate to apply? No, you don't. Okay, very good. 
Um, obviously, we would encourage people to complete their leaving certificate just from a point of view of being able to avail of all the progression routes that are there available to us. But as you say, absolutely not, not a requirement. Um, again, as I say, just coming in here, we have some questions on accommodation and um, the student maintenance grant. The accommodation, we have accommodation available in the local area. And every year we would post those lists on our website, as Enda mentioned already, www.mountvalueagri.com. And indeed, the student maintenance grant that is available to our students, if you, you can access the details for it through our chagask.ie webpage under the tab for education and uh, student maintenance grant. If we come back, guys, to the day-to-day -day workings of the farm, what are the students' engagements like on the day-to-day -day activities on farm? Yeah, I Anything. might just, just yeah. start there. Thank you. Um, so I suppose our level five students would start at nine o'clock in the morning. So they would be, they would start out on practicals and out on, out on the farm on practicals or indeed in our machinery workshop or in our um, uh, buildings lab or our, our soils lab. So those practicals run from nine to 11. We go for a cup of tea at 11 o'clock and a quarter past 11 students are in, in the classroom to cover the theory component. Lunch is from one to two and then from two to four, we're out on practicals again for, for the students. And again, those practicals are on uh, one of our enterprises. It could be a soils practical. Um, it could be a practical, as I said, in our soils lab or in our machinery lab, uh, calibrating fertilizer spreaders, uh, working with, with tractors and machinery. And of course, uh, those practicals are important because not every student uh, will learn in the classroom. Lots of students, particularly coming from farming backgrounds, would like the hands-on approach. And that's what, we, that's what we offer students here. And there's actually um, a great quote from Benjamin Franklin who states, um, tell me and I forget, teach me I may remember, involve me and I learn. And that's exactly what we do here at Mount Valley Agricultural College. We involve our students into all the different practicals that are involved here throughout the uh, farm enterprises. Fabio Senda, thank you. In a nutshell, thank you very much. Just one question before we go to um, a beautiful video presentation of our beef enterprise from Caroline. And thank you, Caroline, and we encourage your questions. Do I need to be able to drive a tractor to attend my value? No, uh, you don't need to be able to drive, drive a tractor. Um, we, will start, um, we, will, we will start with the basics when it comes to our, our tractor driving and tractor driving skills. Uh, we would have a number of students that would come from west of Galway City and they may not have tractors at home on their farms they may be more used to working with, with quads than tractors so we will, we will start with the basics uh, we have two tractors here for the students to to work on or two of our student tractors the first one being um, I suppose an, an older tractor which is our Massey Ferguson 390 which is probably the best example of a 390 in Ireland if not the world um, and we also then have a brand new class area for the students to work on so our students will get uh, to experience both, both, both old and new. And we will take them through the, the steps that will get them from non-drivers to, to drivers. And of course, we will go to the safety element first, because that is hugely important when it comes to uh, working with tractors and machinery. Uh, and then we will get, get the students used to the controls and get them driving the tractor. Super, Enda. Thank you very much. So we'll have our piece now from the Beef Enterprise. Hello, my name is Mark Mulkerns, G. Vagus Falchuk, we call us Talvirte on Hragon. Hello and welcome to Mount Bellew Agricultural College. The dry stock farm at Mount Bellew consists of 70 hectares, 40 limousine cows, with spring born calves reared to stores and sold for finishing. A key component at courses at Mount Bellew is the mixture of classroom based learning and hands-on enterprise-specific skills. For beef students, practical skills include safe handling and movement of cattle, weighing, dosing, and other animal health-related practices, assessing fat and conformation of stock, and selecting suitable bulls and cows for breeding. For training and education, the aim with this enterprise is to produce top quality beef animals for sale to finish off farm in a sustainable dry stock system. Similar to many West of Ireland farms, the college operates on a heavier soil type. However, the main focus is to improve grass growth and utilization, which reduces our reliance on expensive feed inputs. The beef enterprise partakes in both the BDGP and beef schemes to improve the genetic merit of the suckler herd and increase the economic and environmental efficiency 
of the production system. Currently, three quarters of the cows in the herd have four and five star ratings on the replacement index. Studying at Mount Bellew Agricultural College, especially the level six advanced certificate in agriculture dry stock management, will equip you with the skills and knowledge to enhance your own beef farm or to work in industry to support beef farmers. Thank you all for listening and we look forward to meeting you in Mount Bellew this September. Thank you very much, Martin. Can I just pick up on a point that you made there? Uh, with regard to the limousines, we obviously have an affinity to limousine in Mount Bellew. Can you just outline the merits of that or why we have them here on the farm? Yeah, Edna, I suppose breed is one of those things, isn't it? Be it sheep, beef or dairy that um, I'm sure many of our, our listeners this evening, it's, it's one of those things people are passionate about and our farm manager here is passionate about limousine cattle. And we do have a mixture of breeds out there, Charlotte Cross, Limousine Cross, uh, Cemental Cross. There is a mixture of breeds out there. But as you can see in the video, the, the herd is predominantly uh, limousine cattle. And they have um, excellent growth rates. They perform very well in our system um, and they, they produce a top quality animal for sale at the end of the year. Something else that was mentioned in it on the, on the breed there is the, the BDGP or Beef Data Genomics Program. That's similar to what we mentioned earlier, maybe about the economic breeding index. We're buying into that Eurostar. We're trying to improve the maternal index. Um, so we want the cows to be calving down in 365 days, an efficient uh, system, a calf per cow per year. And, you know, as you heard in the video, three quarters of the cows um, that we have here in the college are meeting the requirements of that scheme of the being four and five star on that maternal index, which is um, the actual target for industry was to have 50% or greater, ideally, by the 31st of October this year. So it's great that we're exceeding those targets and we are buying into all the breeding policies across the enterprises on the farm, on the college farms. Thank you, Martin. Barry, could we just pick up on a point there from Martin and just discuss the the practicals, the skills, when the students are actually interacting with the farm animals and they're actually on farm, be it during their own practicals or their work experience, what type of skills are they picking up or being demonstrated? Thanks. Um, well, I suppose the first thing to just mention is that, uh, you know, we, we assume that nobody comes in with all the skills they need to run a farm or to manage a farm. So the skills are taken off, I suppose, from a very basic level. So. You can imagine if you're studying beef husbandry or beef husbandry or sheep husbandry, which is part of the, the course here, you know, you'd start off with maybe dosing, injecting, uh, condition scoring, assessing an animal for sale, uh, picking out breeds of sheep or cattle. Um, so they're, they're the basic skills. So, you know, if somebody was thinking they're, they're, coming, they're not coming from a farming background and they're a little bit worried about not knowing about beef, sheep or dairy, we start at a low level and then we build up with those skills through the year and indeed into level six as well. And that progresses on then to the placement, what we call the PLP. And there's two periods of PLP, at uh, one at level five and one at level six. We have eight weeks at level five, 16 weeks at level six. And those skills are built on then at, at that, in that placement period with the host farmer. The host farmer will uh, encourage the, the learner to, I suppose, sharpen up on those skills and maybe to progress and to better, better him, him or herself on the farm. Thank you, Barry. Obviously our host farmers are a huge part of what we do and the interactions with our host farmers are, they take our students, the learning starts in Mount Bellew and you guys start the, the ball rolling there and then it's taken to the next level with our farmers. So we're, we're always very grateful and very um, appreciative of our, our farmers. Now we mentioned the skills and skills learning and we actually have a question here from Jerry just to, uh, I suppose, alleviate any fears. Oftentimes we have students who would need some reading and writing supports. So the skills component might be quite okay and they might be quite strong on skills, but maybe uh, reading and writing support is necessary. Is that a possibility to get some reading and writing support when in mobile? Absolutely, and we very often find that with students that they come in maybe more confident in their practical skills than they would in their, in their reading and writing, and that's, that's very natural. Um, the first thing to say to that student, I suppose, that's inquiring is that, look, you're not the only person that has that difficulty and there'll be a number of students here every year and you're, you're going to be one of many, you know, throughout the year. Secondly, I suppose we'd encourage that student to um, let us know on the application form that they have maybe a learning difficulty. So when they, when they um, go in to, to fill up their application form, they're just asked whether they have a learning difficulty and if they could let us know at that point in time, we'd be grateful. If they haven't done that, they could, you know, tell us maybe when they start in September. And what happens after that then basically is that 
the access officer meets that student and I suppose has a conversation with the student around what form of um, supports they had at Leaving and Junior Search and what form of supports they may need going forward into the new academic year in Montpellier. And there'll be a plan put in place then for that student for level five and for level six where a reader or a scribe might be given to that student um, over those two years. It's so important to remember too that we may be looking for some evidence of that student's um, learning difficulties. So if they have evidence coming from an educational report or um, Leaving Cert Exams Commission or something like that, that's also useful as well. So but to answer your question in a nutshell, absolutely that student will get whatever help we can possibly manage to give them throughout the two years. Uh, and, and well, I know it, you will for sure. Um, a couple of questions here in and. Uh, do I need to come from a farm or have a farm at home? In this context here, and I know we hear it a lot in the office, we have maybe a concerned parent ringing in about their daughter who wishes to come to Mount Bellew and is feeling, will they be lost? Are there many other ladies here? Is it predominantly guys? Would you like to just alleviate yeah. those fears? Yeah, no problem. Um, we would have, I suppose, farming is, is agriculture is very, very popular. Agricultural um, training and education is very popular amongst uh, all, all students. And we would have a number, and we would find the number of um, girls joining the courses are, is increasing year on year. Um, so we would have a number of, of, of girls in our, both our level five, certain our level five and level six throughout our GMIT courses that are there. So uh, ab absolutely. And again, um, just a, about um, maybe no farming background or uh, not farming at home. Maybe their their aunt or uncle has a farm, or their mm -hmm. grandparents might have have a farm. And look, at all we would say is come in with an interest. Once you have an interest in agriculture, we'll take it from there. Absolutely, couldn't have said it better. Thank you very much. Just before we go to our uh, video on our sheep enterprise, um, field trips and I suppose discussion groups farm visits they're a huge part of the learning process could you just take us through that yeah. please uh barry no problem at all well, i suppose first of all just to say that i suppose when a student uh, goes into level five we probably consider that course more practical and then as it progresses into level six there's probably less practicals but definitely more technical uh, more of a technical side to the program and also more technical farm visits as well so you know we bring students out um primarily on better farms. So we're lucky to have a number of very good better farms around the college here in Montbellu, both beef and sheep. We also bring the students to uh, maybe uh, the mills to see some you know, animal feed being made to the abattoirs. So we're lucky again to have a number of good abattoirs, very good abattoirs local to the college. We bring them to um, research centres in Atenray. You know, again, we're very, very lucky to have Atenray on our doorstep and we go down and see the Newford herd, for example, and the insect flock or um, the sheep research site down there. Um, and apart from that, we'd also do, you know, some other visits. So, for example, this year we brought the students to see a very large commercial uh, sheep milking farm, which aren't very, co very common in Ireland. And we also seen that milk being processed in, um, in a local processing plant as well. So, I suppose to answer your question, we, we do a range of uh, visits, uh, both close to the college and even further away. And, we, you know, including in that, we'd also say we go to maybe plowing championships, grass and muck, and any machinery show, or whatever, whatever's in, of interest to, to the students, we try to bring them there and, and show them as much as we can while they're here in the college. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So I'll leave it to yourself now, actually, as you're coming on in our sheep enterprise here on the farm, and Barry will talk us through it there in the field. Hello, my name is Barry Bonner. Here at Montbellio Agriculture College, students will have an opportunity to learn skills required to operate a sheep enterprise. These skills are covered across all programs and include, for example, dosing, injecting and drafting lambs for sale. Uh, that's to name a few other integral skills associated with managing a modern sheep farm for example, measuring grass and using EID equipment will also be covered on practicals and in class. The dry stock farm at Montbellu consists of 70 hectares, uh, maintaining the college's beef and sheep enterprises. The sheep enterprise, comprising 180 ewes, represents a lowland mid-season lemon flock. The enterprise represents a grass-based sheep production system managed to achieve productive, profitable and sustainable farming system 
giving learners the opportunity to experience firsthand this type of production system. For training and education, the main aim with this enterprise is to equip young farmers with the necessary skills to produce a quality lamb product in a sustainable farming system. On, on farm, the main focus is to increase pro, uh, profitability by improving our technical efficiency in terms of grassland management and stocking rates. We are adopting a range of farm practices that contribute both to improved profitability while also contributing to meeting sustainability challenges. These practices are captured in the seven steps to sustainability. The Sheep Enterprise uses the Sheep Ireland Lamb Plus service to record on-farm performance data, but also to access data on performance recorded rams. The college recently added a ram from the insect flock to the flock in, that, in Mount Bailu, uh, allowing for on-farm comparisons of genetically elite Irish and New Zealand rams. Similarly, the use of pasture base to record grass production and utilization is encouraged Indeed, the use of on-farm generated data to inform improvements in our own productive production system here is key to our management strategy. Studying at Mount Bailey Agriculture College, especially at the level six advanced search in agriculture, which covers dry stock management, gives learners the opportunity for technical training and experience in the, co in the college sheep enterprise. Therefore, providing learners with necessary practical skills to build on their classroom knowledge which has always been the focus of education in the Agriculture Colleges Network. For your presentation there, Barry. Obviously, Mount Bellew Agriculture College, we're not hill sheep farmers, and I know a question that uh, comes to us and in, indeed is here with us this evening um, from our people and from, from those, I suppose, west of the city. I'm a hill sheep farmer. Will I learn anything about hill sheep farming when I come to Mount Bellew? Yeah, look, that's, that's a, a very good question. I suppose, look, from the video you've seen, you've seen the type of lowland uh, pastures we have where typically Scalway Farm, mixed dry stock enterprise plus dairy as well. Uh, I suppose the answer, short answer is no, we don't have hill sheep per se on the farm, but to that student, I'd say, look, you're learning a number of skills that are cross-transferable from lowland sheep to hill sheep. So if you're learning to dose or inject or to body condition score or to foot, bath the sheep or to trim a sheep's feet. It doesn't matter what breed that, sh that animal is. You know, the same applies to a suffer cross as to a, a, a black face you off a mountain. Um, the other thing I'd say as well, like there is a, typically in the modules at both of level five and level six, there's, um, uh, you know, a focus there too on say store lamb production and how would you do with a, a light hill lamb coming off a mountain, uh, you know, in order to finish them. And indeed I mentioned uh, Chagas Gap now a minute ago, uh, we would, uh, I've brought students in the past down to see the store lamb production systems down there and see what they're doing. And we've talked about the economics of, of that system to, to the students. So definitely there's a lot in the modules uh, that would be of interest to that student from the hill farming background. And we definitely would say don't let the location of the college or the breeds we have somehow put you off in, in your choice of mobility. Absolutely. So skills learning is effectively skills learning is, is the point yeah. you're making. Yeah. And obviously we have the facilities here in house on the farm to do that. Yeah. Could you just take us through, please, maybe the facilities on the farm and end might come to yourself then for the facilities in house thereafter. Yeah. So on the farm, so look, we've already seen from the three videos, we, we have two different types of farms right outside the back door here. We have a dairy farm and we have a dry stock enterprise with beef and sheep. Uh, obviously we have facilities to handle, to house and handle those animals. We've Beef house and sheep house and uh, sheep enterprise, uh, sheep um, handle facilities, cattle handle facilities. Uh, we have to coincide with that. Then we would have machinery labs um, uh, for mechanization, uh, cover mechanization with farm building uh, workshops, soils labs. Uh, we have um, you, you know, and included in that, then you'd have maybe you know welding bees and. and and all that so there's plenty of um i suppose if that answers the question there's a lot of facilities we have here and i suppose there's more inside the college as well inside the college door absolutely yeah yeah absolutely um i suppose for our uh, cultural engineering program that we run here and also for our new um level six advanced cert in agricultural mechanization uh what we have is a state-of-the-art hydraulics lab and we might have seen it in the in the video there earlier um and that's 
that's invaluable for students because I suppose with modern tractors, it's, it's very hard to see what's going on underneath all the electronics and underneath um, all the covers. Whereas we can show the student, what, I suppose the tractor and what, what happens, but we can take them up to our hydraulics lab and we can take them through then the, the pumps and the directional control valves and, and the, all the various equip, equipment that uh, goes with, with, with hydraulics. Um, so that's where we'll be getting basically our students to, to build circuits and, and, and test, test circuits. And those um, hydraulic uh, training um, equipment that you've seen, they're essentially like Technic Lego for hydraulics. We can, we can build various circuits as well and, and test very, various circuits. Um, we also have an, an electrical science lab. And again, that's because I suppose a lot of machinery now has gone very electronics based. Uh, that's where we, we have a lab there specifically designed for that, where we can build electronic circuits, test electronic circuits. And we're, we're working with DC circuits uh, in that lab, uh, which is obviously safe. Uh, if we just take it back outside again to our machinery workshop, um, we have a number of engines and gearboxes um, for students to work on. So basically engines that they can take apart, put back together again, same, same with our gearboxes. And we even have the Zetter engine there for the Zetter enthusiasts uh, amongst <laughs> us. Um, so there's, there's great opportunities there for our, our machinery students, essentially, or our agricultural engineering students mm -hmm. to learn about the various um, aspects of advanced agricultural mechanization and, and the way it's going. And I suppose where it has come from and where it's going. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you, Enda. You're obviously there, you're alluding to the level five, the level six, and then building on your seven and your eight. And there are progression routes. And I know we'll, we'll discuss those later. But um, that's obviously we would call those level fives and sixes are, if you like, the feeder courses into the, the, um, the degree courses. And that's obviously a huge component to the overall experience of our students. So how does that then feed into, we we'll say, career paths um, insofar as where do our students tend to go after exiting, be it with their level six, seven or eight? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I suppose I'm, I'm talking about our level five and level, level six programs, our mm -hmm. Chagas programs that we run here. And as, traditionally, I suppose we call them our, our green search, our core green search courses. So after the two years, a student has a, a green cert. And when, when I say green cert, that's will um, give our, our students their agricultural relief. Um, so we have the option there, and we were very fortunate to have great links with GMIT. And we have um, some great progression routes for our students that come off the, our level six programs. So they can uh, decide to go into um, our agri-business course. Uh, they can decide to go into our um, um, agricultural and environmental management course and indeed into our agricultural engineering course. So that's the progression routes for our students leaving the level, level six program. And obviously careers, I suppose, from our level five, but we would always encourage our students and, and all our students would progress to level six. And of course, in careers after our level six, we're looking at, um, I suppose, if we take our, our dairy course, we're looking at students that maybe are taking over a dairy enterprise at home. They could be maybe a new entrance into dairy, uh, or as I said, taking home a dairy or, 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 or going back to dairy farming at home and want to better their, their dairy farm. We also would have um, level six dairy students that would maybe become technicians or would manage farms, both here in Ireland and uh, in New Zealand, Australia, and across the uh, continent. Um, for the advanced level six dairy herd management course, uh, again, our students would maybe want to better their home farms if they're coming from a dry stock farm. So they'd want to do something that's going to maybe increase or improve the production of their, of their farm. And they will learn val valuable skills here and how to do that. Uh, again, they could be going into a farm management role, be it here or abroad, or a farm technician role. Um, those students that progress to um, the level seven and level eight GMIT courses, um, I suppose with the agricultural um, or agri-business course, um, lots of opportunities for those students. So those, those, would, those students will be, will be mopped up after they come out with their level seven and level eight in agri-business, um, agri-sales, um, uh, co-ops, 
Well, just to add to what Enda's saying there, Edna, like, uh, as you've mentioned there, um, Enda, we have lots of students who've beef sheep there that are very, very successful farm managers. Now, I know we're going to see a, a video in a few minutes now from a, a past student who's been very, very successful in dairy. I was just looking at uh, Instagram last week, and one of our past students, Ed Payne, had put up that he was very proud that he had um, got students of the year in his level five in Mount Bellew, who's a very successful dairy farmer, as common. We also have a farmer sheep farmer of the year, as a past student in Mount Bellew, we've had former students that are participants in the Better Farm Beef Program, uh, which is a monitor farm program where commercial farms are implementing all the latest technologies, which as Barry has mentioned, a lot of the students go out to see them. But to, to add to the level, and sev level seven and level eight and that progression, a lot of people also, so they're the people who go home to farm. Maybe not everyone has that opportunity, but as Enda says, a lot of our students or the majority of our students are getting mopped up into a vast array of different companies. So we have Chagas, the Department of Ag, Board Bia, uh, the different banks, um, FRS, we have Arevo Co-op, so many different, uh, Keypack, Dawn Meats, Devonish Nutrition. I've been hearing so many different companies over the last few days, it's hard to remember them all. But you know, there's just a flavor for anyone watching of, yes, you'll have the skills leaving here to go home and manage your dairy, beef, sheep enterprise, whatever enterprise it is, you'll be equipped with the skills to go home and do that but also there's massive opportunities there to progress uh, further your education and to go out and work in industry as well. And yeah, just, just to add to that point, uh, Martin, and just looking at the, the backdrop there behind you from our agricultural uh, engineering program, and I suppose it's, it, it's, it's the only level eight agricultural engineering program in Ireland. And uh, from there, that, I suppose that program or that course will, uh, I suppose, teach uh, our students to become design engineers. So instead of working maybe on tractors or with machinery, it's basically designing machinery in research and development and essentially design engineers. So we would have students that would do uh, work placement in the likes of Michael's engineering behind you, Malone, um, Major, AgriSpread, all the, all the big engineering companies we have here in the, in the west of Ireland, JFC being, being one of them also. Fantastic, and, uh, and Martin, and thank you. Martin, you alluded there to a video presentation that we just have coming up now in a few minutes from Kevin Moore, obviously one of our own past pupils. Barry, I think you had the pleasure of teaching Kevin when he was here. Yeah. You and I are also past pupils as well, of my value, but uh, I think Kevin was better. <laughs> so we're going to have a, a wonderful video presentation that Kevin actually put together himself very kindly for us. So we'll leave it to Kevin. My name is Kevin Moran. I'm a dairy farmer here in uh, Carlisle Strand, County Galway. And uh, for the next uh, three or four minutes, I'm going to give you a brief tour of my farm, uh, an insight into it, and an insight into the time that I spent in Mount, Be Mount Bellew Agricultural College. So follow me. This here is a, a map of the farm uh, today. Um, and six years ago, it would have been, uh, when I started out first, I leased uh, an 85 acre block uh, here and uh, milk 72 cows and since then I've grown it to 265 acres milking 270 cows. This uh, milk parlor uh, was constructed last year. It is a 44 bale white cattle uh, rotary parlor. It has an output with one person uh, working it, it has an output of approximately 300 cows per hour, um, depending on the time of year. So these are my cows. Um, it's a spring calf and herd, uh, so we calf in February, March, and, and some April calfers. Um, we run, we breed a Jersey crossbred cow, um, focusing on converting grass into kilos of milk solids uh, as f efficiently as possible, both in terms of um, the environmental and the carbon side of things uh, as well as economically. Um, so I guess if I was to say what has made it all possible, uh, it would very much start with Mount Bellew Agricultural College. Um, the one thing I found is that you require a huge, a wide range of skills uh, and knowledge and a big network of people to start up a dairy farm and then grow it. And also more importantly, and most importantly, is to gain efficiencies and uh, be economically sustainable. Uh, and my time at Mount Bellew definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, gave me the skills that I needed for all of that. Um, and I really, what's more is, I really enjoyed it. I did a, 
the Certificate in Agriculture Level 6 course in, from 2012 till 2014. And uh, if I could go back and do it all over again, I certainly would. Uh, it's, it has a real homely effect in Mount Bellew, and there's no doubt that the, the teachers and lecturers, they go that extra mile and they take a huge interest in their students. Oh, thank you, Kevin, for that. Kevin is obviously, as I alluded to, one of our own um, past pupils. If we could just discuss the Past Pupils Union. The Past Pupils Union has been an extremely strong union committee within Mount Bellew, and a little bit later we will discuss an initiative that they had in Africa. So can I just put it out to you guys, just in regards to the Past Pupils? Sorry? Yes, well, look, the Past Pupils Union is a cohort of past pupils who are... I suppose they're there in the background of the college helping us uh, with various different um, initiatives that are going on. I suppose, as you, as you said, we're going to see the video in a few minutes about the, how we've put together a few containers for, for Africa. And uh, I suppose without their help, I suppose, or with, with their help, we've done a number of uh, initiatives like that through the years. And um, I suppose it's, it's, you know, the students of all different backgrounds that have been in the college over the years are part of that union. and. It's, uh, they're definitely part of the, the family, if you like, here in Mount Bellew. Absolutely. I think it's fantastic as well, Edna, to get such a great endorsement there from, from Kevin. And as you mentioned, we have so many other past students around, um, be they better farmers or dairy farmers, high profile, working in industry. And I think what's really nice to see too is that many of our students actually go back out to these farmers on placement or getting experience on these farms. They've been really good to, I think, our, our students over the years, taking them back and you know, to, to give back to, to their college that they once attended themselves, which I think is a, is a nice thing as well. Absolutely. And um, Kevin spoke at um, a Chagas Education Conference that we held here a couple of years back, and he spoke about his experience here in, in Mount Valley College, and there was um, a question posed to him from the audience that day, and it basically asked, well, what did you get from Mount Bellew? And I thought Kevin answered it very well. He goes, I suppose, I'll put it in, in monetary terms because uh, money is a, a, a universal language. He goes, the skills I have learned, and one in particular about grassland management. He says, um, I, I learned how to manage grass much more efficiently. Therefore, uh, that equated to more milk in my bull tank, which equated to more money essentially in my back pocket. And that's essentially what, what students will learn here. We will, they will learn lots of different skills across all our enterprises. Um, lots of different practicals and, and if they can take a few of them and just use them on their own farm to, to better their own farm, that's exactly what we want. Fantastic and, and thank you. Uh, we mentioned there an initiative in Africa and the question that we've just had in, are there opportunities to travel as a part of our programs? Martin, would you take that please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there were students, I think Enda has alluded to it earlier on, that we've had a student even this year that's went as far as New Zealand. We have students that have went to Australia, we have students, I know I was hearing it in the staff from earlier this year that there was offers there. Would there be anyone that was willing to go out to Scotland? So there, absolutely, there's a massive amount of opportunities there, not only to travel within Ireland, but to travel abroad. And, you know, I was fortunate myself in college to, you know, avail of such a program. And if anyone's watching this and has the desire to travel and to be doing their studies in agriculture as well, all the staff are here to support you in that. We do have the connections. We do have the network. Students have already done that. Um, so whatever your interests are, um, is it to travel abroad? Is it a different enterprise? You know, we've mentioned a lot about dairy, beef, sheep. We have students on pig placement, poultry placement. Any interest that the student has, if they have a good proposal, we're all here behind you to back you 100% and to, to, to guide you in the direction you want to go. Fantastic, Martin, and thank you. So we mentioned Africa, obviously. Mount Bellew Agricultural College has two daughter colleges in Africa, one in Baraka in Kenya, and one in Adra in Uganda. And we're so very lucky to have a wonderful video, video presentation coming up from our colleagues in Adra and those that are studying there just at the minute. We're very happy and privileged to join you on this Montpellier Agriculture College Chagas virtual evening. Um, Montpellier Agriculture College has two daughter colleges in East Africa. This one here in Adra, and one 900 kilometers away in Kenya, uh, Barak Agricultural College. Us, Adra Agricultural College is committed to care and conserve natural uh, resources within the college and outside and in its catchment areas. We encourage the growth of 
local food varieties that we find within the region. The region here meaning is the Northern Uganda, uh, South Sudan, and the Northeastern Democratic Republic of Congo. As a college, we promote the capacity building of these farmers in order to be in position to improve their production and also increase productivity per unit area of those crops. There are two containers coming from Ireland with all the tools and equipment for this farm here. Thanks to the good people of Ireland who donated all those, this, this equipment and money and so forth to this project that I'm doing at the moment. And special thanks to Mount Bellew Agricultural College and the Vincent Flynn and the past pupils. Without support of past pupils who donated uh, money and also equipment to the, to the, the event, it, this would not have been possible. So Mount Bellew is very special. It does not end the day you leave the college because you can still keep in contact with your classmates with whom you forged a strong bonds and also the staff through the Past Pupils Committee. Just on behalf of all of us here in Adra and also from Baraka and the Francisco of the East African in general, I would just like to say thank you very much to Chagask, to Mobelli Agriculture College for giving us this opportunity of sharing what we're doing here and just to wish you well. May God bless you and keep you always and keep you safe and Enjoy. Martin, I might actually come to you there from um, our video from Adra. You've actually been there, haven't you? Would you just talk us through your own experience when you were there, please? Yeah, I suppose it's something I'm, I'm very passionate about, Edna. And as I said at the beginning, it's, uh, I had the fortunate opportunity to travel there in, in, from November through to mid-December in 2017. And I'm you know, I think just before we started, we could see the brother Tony, who you saw in your videos, actually online watching us here from Uganda and Kenya. And it's, um, you know, it's something very special. I think as Vincent Flynn mentioned in the, in the video, um, a key message I'd like to come out of that video is what brother Alf and Vincent are alluding to is that, you know, when you come here to study at Mount Bellew, and I think Kevin alluded to in his video as well, is you, you become a part of a family. You are going to be looked after, as we mentioned, supported all the way. Um, and what a fantastic initiative as Brother Alf and Vincent are talking about there. And that's the past pupils of Mount Bellew, the farmers that we've spoke about that are taking students on placement. All of those people and the staff here at the college and locals have come together, fundraised massive amounts of money and tractors, all types of farm machinery, tools, everything in two fantastic containers, which we're delighted, I suppose, to say are in Kampal at the minute. I know Brother Alf, who you saw in the video, is itching for those containers to, to reach Adra. <laughs> Um, but it's invaluable what the past pupils of Mount Bellew have provided to those people. Um, you know, people who are far uh, worse off than we are, that are still living in mud huts, no electricity, no running water, and what Brother Tony, Brother Alf, the Franciscan brothers, um, and all of their staff are doing their colleges to support those people. Many refugees from South Sudan coming there for short-term courses. I think it's an incredible initiative and 100% big thumbs up and credit to all the Mount Bellew past students who've been a part of that. And I suppose for anyone watching that is thinking about coming to Mount Bellew, you will be part of that family. You will be part of that. Um, and we are, as, as you saw in the video, have these two sister colleges in Uganda, which makes us different to, to anybody else. So, you know, um, there is those opportunities as well to volunteer there. And as I said, I was very fortunate to do so. And it's, um, I'm sure there'll be many more volunteers going from Mount Bellew to Adra. Absolutely, Martin. Now, a huge part of agriculture in Adra and in Baraka has been the whole concept of sustainable agriculture in particular. Can you just talk us through your own experience? What did you see there in terms of sustainable agriculture? Because it's a huge part of our ethos here, I suppose, to maintain that. I suppose, like the, the Franciscan brothers were the original founders of Mount Bellew Ag College and they've brought that ethos to Adran Barak Agricultural College. What you find when you go there, Edna, and to anyone listening is, you know, very small farms, one hectare where they're growing crops, they're trying to support their families. I mentioned how those people live. The one hectare of land is to support a family for the whole year. To put things into context, the average income in the area is 100 euro. It costs 100 euro. What's that? Well, it costs 100 euro for one child to attend secondary school for the year. 
there's only 82 students when I was there that got to attend secondary school. So the brothers and Adra, they bring in students on short-term courses on vegetable production, beekeeping, uh, goat production, poultry, I think you saw in the, in the uh, video there as well. And the same thing as what we're doing in Mount Bellew is we're trying to give the students the skills so that they can go back, the skills and the knowledge to do it for themselves. It's really that message of give a, a man or a lady, of, um, you know, um, teach them how to do it themselves and to go home and do it. And that's uh, what they're doing in Adra. And it was inspiring to go to the local villages and the refugee camps to see the students putting what they learned into practice. Thank you, Martin. There's a question posed here, and Barry, you might take with regard to work placement. Mm -hmm. um, what does work placement look like? What are the options in terms of work placement? Yeah, that's a very good question. I suppose we're asked that very often because when a student is coming to Montpellier, I suppose, uh, you know, primarily on the mind is, you know, the practical side of it, maybe not the book side, but, you know, will I be out, will I be farming, and when and where will I do that? So when the student comes here in September, I suppose, the placement officer, officer will meet that student say level five student just starting off, that placement officer will uh, align that student up or uh, link that student up with a, with a host farmer. We have a network of host farmers throughout the, the, the west, west of Ireland here around our own region, around the college, who take students every year for us. They take both level five and level six students. So starting off level five, that student will do four weeks work placement in uh, the month of October and then another four weeks in the month of, of February. So by the end of first year, they've completed eight weeks work placement. That then continues on to level six. So the students starting back in September in their second year um, will do from September through to maybe February in the college. And then they've, uh, they've 16 weeks uh, work placement in the, uh, with, with a host farmer in second year. So in total, as I said already, I think, you know, there's 24 weeks out of the two years, which is quite a substantial amount of time spent on, on commercial farms. So the student that's come in may think, well, look, I don't know a farmer. I'm not from a farming background, so I may not have the connections, but they need not worry because the placement officer here will actually set them up with a farmer uh, that's, you know, that's suitable, that has probably taken students. Maybe, you know, I've been talking to farmers last week who have take, taken students for 20, 30 years, like so very experienced farmers who are very capable of showing the students the ropes. And as we said earlier on, you know, uh, maybe improving on that student skills uh, when, they're, when they're in placement as well. And that also goes through the other courses, the machinery, the higher level courses, um, whether it's agri business or the uh, ag science courses, ag engineering courses. Placement is an integral part of what we do here in Mount Value. And we, as Enda mentioned, you know, we learn by doing. Absolutely. And of course, those uh, students will also get a chance to travel if they wish to travel yeah, to New Zealand or to be the farm placement. Yeah. And we actually got our, got an email from a Chagas host farmer in New Zealand that gave us a, a glowing reference of a student that had completed their placement there um, this year. So it's a great endorsement for, for our students that are, are traveling abroad. And it's, it's a great opportunity for them to see new things and bring them back home to their home farms if they're yeah. continuing farming at home. It leads perfectly into, into a question on alternative farm enterprises. Will the students be exposed to alternative farm enterprises here on farm? Will they learn about them themselves? Where do we kind of factor that in? Yeah, um, that's a good question. And there is a module called Principles of Agriculture, it's a level five module. So within that module, they will be exposed to, as um, Martin said, uh, maybe beekeeping, poultry, pig production, um, we would also have um, uh, pa past students of here. Um, that will, one particular past student who set up with the, the friendly farmer. Um, it's a poultry poultry business poultry unit in Athenry, where he um, is in is uh, into um, organic poultry and set up his own avatar. So there is great great opportunities to learn about alternative farm enterprises here. Absolutely. Fantastic, and and thank you. Now we've discussed a lot about the learning and the the programs. There is a social side to everything we do in Mount Bellevue as well, and there's a sports side. Do you want to just talk us through perhaps maybe the different organisations, the likes of MOCRA and those that we engage in? Martin, could you pick it up there as our All-Ireland handball champion, perhaps? <laughs> well, somehow I've managed to introduce handball alleys to Uganda, but not here to Mount Bellevue. Yes, so we have a work in progress there. But, um, you know, very quickly, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I'm the newer member of staff here since January. Um, but very quickly, and, and Barry and Endel come in here and tell me, well, we had a MACRA, MACRA Challenges Day here, I think, in early February, where we had all the other agricultural colleges, and, and we have teams competing in, in the different sports as well. Um, yeah, and also, uh, 
uh, we had um, sorry, it's not clear. Ken Doherty. Ken Doherty, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Pass me by. We Ken Doherty here for a challenge night um, through the winter, and we had an absolutely brilliant night. Ken challenged local uh, pool players to uh, competitions throughout the night, and it was very, very entertaining. And Macra, the Macra Club here in Mount Valley and College actually ran that. One of the students in particular took on the mantle and absolutely done a fantastic job on the night. And all the staff were there and local people and we, you know, it was a fabulous night. So it just shows you, I suppose, what the students can do when they get together, their heads together in a club like Macra, not just Macra, but other various clubs. And we also have um, football and hurling here in the college as well, just to mention that because I'm, uh, I suppose, involved in that myself, that we have, you know, for students who are interested in getting out and leaving, doing, doing a bit of training, you know, we, we run um, uh, training maybe two nights a week. We have sevens inside uh, 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 Gaelic football and hurling among the colleges, both boys and girls. So for any student who is into sport, I suppose, look, uh, the ag college, ag colleges in general and in Mont 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 would encourage that and encourage students to partake in the sport or partake in and mock while they're here. In the Don't be too modest about our football teams now, Barry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, successful some years. Yeah, yeah um, there was a question earlier about um, uh, girls trying the course, and I suppose mm -hmm. uh, this year was our first yeah. year to field. Um, a Chagas Intercolleges inter ladies yeah. football team. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we had a, a among the Chagas colleges, we had a, a, a kind of blitz among the ladies in the college. Actually, we fielded two teams. There was a question about ladies uh, being in the college, but we, we fielded two teams that day and we done very well. We actually came out tops on, on that day with the ladies. So, look, okay, yeah, there's something for everybody, in other words, here in the college. Fantastic, guys, and thank you very much. And I'm just conscious of time, so we might just um, recap on the application process and progression, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Well, our fundamental question, the course starting, and what will it look like come September? Yeah, it's a, it's a fair question because, of course, with, with everything that's going on, um, things will be a little bit different in September, but I suppose just to let you know that we are open for business in, in September. It's going to be, I suppose, business as usual. Um, uh, we are commencing our, our courses here on the 16th uh, of September, so that's when, we're, that's when we're going to start. And I suppose we're going to take a very much blended learning approach uh, while this pandemic is, is, is in place. Uh, we are, of course, we'll be taking our guidance from the Department of Education and Department of Health, but essentially what that means is most of the theory components or all of the theory components will be delivered online through our um, very good uh, user, uh, student user-friendly online platform, which we use is, is Moodle. So all coursework and assessments will be done through that, um, through that medium. Um, because I suppose the, the job of farming and the, and, the, and the job of agriculture is very practical based. Yes, we will need uh, students to be here maybe a day a week to complete their practicals on, on, on the various farm enterprises. So most of it will be uh, online, an online approach, and we'll have students here in small groups uh, throughout the, this, the foreseeable, I suppose, pandemic uh, here in small groups to complete their practicals. Thank you very much. Can we just recap there, because we have a, a screenshot of our webpage, the application process for us. Application is very, very simple, very straightforward. As I said, if you log on to www.ompelioagri.com, uh, there's a link in blue, uh, register for our level, um, level five search for agriculture and have the three bits of paper you need with you, your PPS number, your um, birth cert and a driver's license if you have that. Uh, and then just, just follow the steps there. Um, very straightforward process. Fantastic. Then just to recap again and to wrap up on our progression routes. So obviously we have the level five and level six, then into our sevens and eights. Yes, absolutely. And um, on, on screen, you'll see, I suppose, the progression route um, from our level five right up to our level eight programs. And um, I suppose it's important that uh, I suppose you, we're going to start with level five and from there then you can work into our three uh, level six advanced search options and as I said earlier we're, we're, we're um, far, very fortunate to have those links with GMIT for our students to progress to the agribusiness course or um, the um, agriculture and environmental management course or indeed our agricultural engineering course. I suppose they would be our uh, our, our level five and level six, as we said, are traditionally our green, green cert courses. Um, students can progress to uh, those GMIT courses from after level six. Um, but of course, we would also have students um, that might want to com complete uh, distance 
education and we offer we have currently a number of distance education courses uh, ongoing here in the college and these are essentially for um, people who uh, want the, the, the green search and it's basically an accelerated uh, version of the green search and so the only stipulation there is that uh, students or, or prospective students must have a level six major award in a non-agricultural discipline so typically we would have uh, students that may be from uh, have a trade or an apprenticeship completed nurses doctors solicitors teachers and um, again if you keep an eye on our website valueagree.com for the next availability on those courses that we can commence in, in in the autumn thank you very much enda martin i'm going to leave the last word to yourself it's not always easy to know where you want to go if you want to do level five or six or progress what would you say to anybody that's a little bit unsure of themselves yeah, absolutely. Look, I think I'm not sure about uh, my colleagues here, but I know for a fact when I was sitting down in, in school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. It's, I'm sure there's many people watching this evening or maybe they'll be watching us in the future on, on YouTube or something. They'll be wondering, you know, what is it that I want to do? And it is very difficult to know. I would have contemplated at the time human nutrition, physio, agricultural sciences there. And in the end, I think everyone watching us here this evening is passionate about farming is passionate about agriculture. And I think coming here to Mount Bellew, I hope that we've given you a good insight to what we can provide you here. Um, but I'd encourage everyone to, to have a think about that. What is it that you want to do? And we do have the experience, the longest serving college in the country in providing agricultural courses. And we have the level five, the level six. And as you outlined there, there is opportunities there for students that wish to move on into further education, into GMIT, to level seven, level eight, and we've already mentioned earlier on how well man many of those students are doing at farm level, managing beef, dairy, and sheep farms and other enterprises, but also working in industry with all the companies that we mentioned earlier. So it takes, it's not easy, but you have to just spend a little time with it, talk to your, to your family, your friends, and uh, we are, we're all hoping here in Mount Bellia to see you here in September, and we'll support you all the way. Thank you very much, Martin, in a nutshell. So on behalf of everybody here in Mount Bellew, thank you for tuning in, for sending in your questions. The webinar tonight is recorded and it'll be available on the Chagas YouTube channel and on mountbellewagri.com webpage. If we didn't get your question tonight, we have them recorded and we will be in touch with you in due course. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues here for a fantastic night, those working in the background, and especially to Chagas Declan McArdle for making all of this happen. Good evening from all here in Mount Bellew and we very much look forward to seeing you here in September.